see God's plan for it, you didn't pass it over. You're actually it when Gideon turns people over a fleet to fly. When the traveler is treated with dignity and respect, when a woman is able to choose what to do with her body, when a, when a poor person is given a seat of honor, when a person of color is invited into seats of influence and leadership, there, right there, right there is God's brain right there. So how can we be fruitful branches today? Exactly. There are some clear ways to be fruits today, to resemble the that Jesus he follows, to abide in the divine, to remain as one, to not become different, to not become another. The one way is when we see or hear that which is wrong, we call it out for being wrong. We name it, we address it, we confront it. We confront the wrongs, the injustices, the sins of the world with the language of the scriptures, with God's heart on the matter, through the power of the Holy Spirit within us, we become witnesses of God's promises of God's truth. But we also let our hearts break for what breaks God's heart. We let our eyes see the world like God sees. But have we been paying attention? Our young people across the nation this past week from Columbia University to the University of Southern California, from Ohio State University to Emory University, more than 20 universities where students and faculty are protesting the bloodshed of civilian life. Two max graves found in the Gaza Strip containing nearly 400 bodies, including women children and elderly whose bodies show signs of torture and execution are simply horrific, clearly wrong. But can we let our hearts break? Can we let our eyes see? These young protesters and faculty are demanding that their universities financial ties and divest from companies that are supporting and enabling Israel to continue such genocide. And let me say something that apparently has become medical, confusing, perplexing. But calling out the slaughter of innocent Palestinians, mostly women and children, is not anti Semitic. It is not anti Israel. One can criticize the nation's policies and actions without any information. See, the call here is for conscience, for moral sense, for accountability, for peace, for ceasefire, for justice. And so I commend these students and faculty for such boldness, for such conscience, for such courage to call out the wrong in this world. But I also pray for their protection. I pray for the message to get out, to be positive, change of change. But my only lament is this. Where is the American Christian Church in our place? Unsurprisingly, quiet, silent, neutral, floundering upon inorganic things. Where is the resemblance of Jesus? Where is the fruit? Where is the church? You know, sadly, this is not the only geographical location where wrong exists. It exists also in the Rio Grande. The Washington Post recently reported about a rising number of deaths along the southwest border, which is gone largely unnoticed, by the way. First responders have run out of body bags, burial plots. There are trailers full of dead bodies. There's a record number of deaths, travelers, migrants, drowning, unable to cross the river because of its powerful undercurrents, because of its slippery rocks. In 2018, there was 281 fatalities. That figure has skyrocketed to nearly 900 in 2022. And I'm sure today, 
that is like you are that. And since really the best of the U.S. can do, then I am in the midst of delivering global migration to force people to enter the country through a dangerous rising river. That will likely be given. Children and others have attempted to cross, and the results have been pulled into. Can we let our hearts break? Can we let our eyes see? Where is the dignity? Where is the resemblance of Jesus? Where is the fruit? Where is the American Christian church so silent and so beautiful? Where there is overwhelming evidence in the language of the scriptures from the Hebrew narrative all the way to the New Testament. You listen to this. Deuteronomy 10.19. He enacts justice for orphans and widows, and he loves immigrants, gives them food and clothing. That means that you must also love immigrants because you were once immigrants in the future. Leviticus 19.34. And if any immigrant that lives with you must be treated as if they were one of your citizens. You must love them as yourself because you were once immigrants in the land of Egypt. Psalms 146.9, the Lord who protects immigrants, who helps orphans and widows. Zechariah 7.10, don't oppress the widow, the orphan and old stranger. Matthew 25.35, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger or an immigrant and you welcomed me. Romans 12.13, contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your homes. Hebrews 13, 1 through 3, we found loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to immigrants, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without fear. The stupefying, the gross, incongruency, discrepancy between much of Christianity and the God. The role of hypocrisy, of those who claim to be truthful branches, who claim to abide in the divine, and get to have the of God that he claimed in the world. They think, they act, they speak, they respond so differently than Jesus. They are not alive. They are not remaining as one. They have become another. They have become different. So what do we do with such a red Perhaps it begins with boldly proclaiming God's rain and flow and shallow peace, breaking in to the world despite the silence, despite the quietness and neutrality. We boldly proclaim this world is being made. That there is a preparing the feeling of the entire thing already happening and then we shout it out to the world that a future universe is coming, one that will be just, one that will be good, and one that will be for all people. It is being made new and it is apparent by those who are righting the wrongs. Today on our campus, visible to those who are speaking out on behalf of the oppressed at our houses, shelters, Palpable in churches that stand in solidarity with the exploited at our U.S. borders. Noticeable to the disciples of Jesus who stand in mutuality with the poor and the other the world. Like never before, we must be fruitful branches that are routinely pruned to bear more fruit. We must call out the wrongs and injustices in this world. We must resemble Jesus. We must be witnesses to Jesus' words. I am the vine. 